the day after Palm Sunday, that, that grand entrance that Jesus made into Jerusalem, he, he spent the night that night in Bethany, which is just right across the Kidron Valley from uh, Jerusalem. And um, then the next morning he gets up on Monday, sometimes called Holy Monday, and he and the disciples make uh, one of their final trips across that Kidron Valley uh, to the temple. And as they're going, there are two things that happened uh, that are significant to this day. Uh, the story is recorded in Mark's Gospel, chapter 11. We left off with verse 11 yesterday. Pick up with verse 12 today and continue reading. And there were two things that happened uh, on this day. One, Jesus, as he was making his way with his disciples to the temple, noticed a fig tree. And uh, the fig tree's leaves were luscious and, and, and large. And, and Jesus was hungry. And he thought, well, I'll just walk over to the fig tree and, and, uh, and collect some figs and, uh, and eat them as I make my way up to uh, the temple. But when he approached the fig tree and he got close, he recognized that it was just leaves. There was no fruit on the tree at all. Uh, it had given evidence that there was fruit, but there was none. And as a result of that, the Bible said Jesus cursed the fig tree. Now, this was kind of confusing to the disciples. They watched that and no doubt wondered what in the world is Jesus up to and what does this mean? But he continued on. He walks into the temple. And the second thing that happens of significance is that as Jesus walks into the temple area, a large area uh, in Jerusalem, about 30 acres actually, but in the temple area or on the temple mound, there are three areas within the temple. There's the court of, of the Gentiles, where Gentiles and women and men could go. There was beyond that, the court of the women, beyond that, the court of men, and then uh, the court just for the priest and the Holy of Holies. But it was in that outer court that Jesus enters and he sees these money changers. Now, you got to understand something. First of all, the money changers had a right to be there. What they did was uh, necessary. Uh, people would bring their offering and the temple treasury would only accept a certain kind of coin. And, uh, and so if people didn't live in the area of Jerusalem, they would bring money from where they were and they would need to change that into the coins that were accepted as a part of the offering. Also, you would recognize many of these uh, worshipers had traveled for many miles. And so rather than try to bring a lamb for a sacrifice or a dove to offer as a sacrifice, they would simply purchase the dove or purchase the lamb there to use as a sacrifice. So the, the money changers had a right to be there. They served a purpose. But what had happened over the years, what uh, was there to provide convenience for the people who were traveling and, and who wanted to worship it become a way to make money. And uh, the money changers, as they are referred to here, became uh, all interested in profit and were just gouging people, taking advantage of the fact that they needed their services and there wasn't anywhere else to go. And it was that that angered Jesus. This is the attitude of it's all about me in a temple where it's supposed to be all about God. And so Jesus angrily throws the money changers out and fulfills again another passage of scripture as he quotes an Old Testament text and says, my father's house is to be called a house of prayer of many nations or of all nations, but you have made it a den of thieves. Now, I think there are two indictments that come down in this story. One of them we'll not really see until tomorrow, but I'm going to talk about it today. Tomorrow, we're going to discover that Jesus comes back to Jerusalem, back to the temple area, and remember the tree that he just cursed for having no fruit? It's withered and died. And so the disciples say, hey, master, look, there's the tree that you cursed, and it's withered and died. What we recognize is that event of Jesus cursing the tree and casting out the money changers, that's connected you see, in the Old Testament, the fig tree is an illustration of the nation of Israel. And God was ultimately saying this, you guys look like you're alive, but you're dead. You look like you are productive, but you're not. And then as he looked at the money changers, it, it was an indictment against, um, uh, against the nation of Israel that we should take personal today because he was saying, in, in a sense, there is a profession of faith, but there is no practice of it. Um, you profess to be one thing and yet you are another. 
Uh, I've often told the story of growing up, and my dad was a pastor when I was growing up, and he had a big old desk um, in his office and a plate of glass on top of the desk is as kind of common and was in that day. And my dad only had one thing under that plate of glass. A lot of times people put pictures and things. Dad had a little uh, business size card. In fact, I've got that card right now on my desk. But the business card simply says this, if you were arrested for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict you? And that's what Jesus is saying. You make a profession, but there's nothing to substantiate that. And as he threw the money changers out of the temple, he was ultimately saying, hey, this is a picture of religion, but no relationship. And ultimately what Jesus was trying to say is, hey, I have come that you might have a relationship with God. Religion is not just of going through the motions. It's not about how many times you go to church. It's not about being baptized. It's not about giving an offering. It's about a relationship that we can have with God. And everything Jesus did, and we see the fruit of that throughout this final Passion Week, everything Jesus did is to make it possible for you to have a relationship with God. So today, read that passage of Scripture, and why don't you give some thought to that? Is there any evidence in your life that you have a personal relationship with Jesus? And do you have a personal relationship with Christ? What is it that you're counting on to get you to heaven? Is it church membership or baptism? Because the Bible tells us we're not going to heaven because we've been baptized or because we're a member of a church. We only go to heaven as a result of what God does for us in the person of Jesus. And that's our focus this week. Think about that. Is there profession in your life without practice? Is it possible that there is religion without a relationship? And today might be a day that you can begin that relationship with God through faith in Jesus Christ. So thank God for that experience as you reflect upon this, the second of the seven days that we're going to look at.